Jamie Hunt. He's Pat Heath. We're in Berlin again for another edition of ESP School of Metal Guitar, and this time we're looking at thrash metal. Yeah. So all things fast, all things abrasive. Uh, so, for this one, we've got a main riff. Um, we want kind of classic thrash here, so I think yeah. it's standard tuning, no extra strings, no down tuning. Well, I think that, that standard tuning is really important yeah. because, for you know, you can tune down for thrash, it's fine, you can make a thrashy noise, but uh, there's something about the tension of the strings and the way those mm. records were made sure. back in the day. And I think also, when you're in standard tuning, you're forced to get that energy that yeah. aggression from your pick hand and your yeah. note choices. There's kind exactly. of nothing helping you out, is it? It's yeah. like you've got to find those flavours and nuances. Um, so we went there because we thought that would force us to, to explore this stuff. Yeah. So our opening riff, harmonically, if I show you the chord changes first and play the riff, you'll hear what's going on. Um, there's a few things going on in between, but really it's E minor, because we want to use our open sixth string. Move into an A. That's the movement. Okay doesn't sound particularly thrash metal at this point, but when you start to spruce that up and go, okay, well, we'll take the E as an E power chord with some 16th note chugging and palm muting going on in between. Stop via a G power chord. Slide up to a B flat, which is a significant note in the key of E. So what is that note? Pat? It's the flat fifth, and actually, to be honest with you, it's most... If you want to sound thrash, it's yeah. a go-to, isn't it, really? Sure. sure. So we're just leaning on it, yeah, subtly, in this riff, so... Up to that B-flat, yeah. and then resolve down. There's that H, H change I was talking about. So. And to give it a bit of life, spring up the octave, and if you want to get a squealy on that note, you can. Um, then back to our G, repeat. And then this time... A little phrase going on there. Now what's yeah. happening, that B flat again, mm -hmm. that note that we talked about that was the E, the flat five against our E, because we're now pummeling it against an A note, we hear a, another yeah. thrash metal flavour, um, Phrygian mode. It's got a kind of Egyptian exotic kind of sound to Very it. Cool. So just by hammering onto that B flat from the A, we start to get some of those power slave type nuances. Um, and then it kind of falls back around on those notes again. So the whole phrase. <laughs> it's 
So you can now hear that E, A. That's the chord, that's the song, like that. isn't it? The chord change, essentially. Yeah. If you want a song, you can sit around on... It's got going through It's the E to the A that's yeah. the, the song. The core of what's going on. Yeah. So we cycle that round as I just played it, then we get to a turnaround sequence. Um, and I wanted to make this feel like it was a bit of a gear change. And you get this a lot in thrash where it's very 16th note to start with that da 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 But then to make it feel like somebody just grabbed the handbrake on the car that you're on, um, we shift to triplets, eighth note triplets. So instead of going da 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 we go to da 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 which is yeah. great for a turnaround because it starts to give it yeah. weight, pull it back, and then you kind of let the cannonball go again when you're either going to repeat the totally. riff or go into the next section. So um, to get into those triplets, I started to use some intervals that you don't associate with metal. I went for the, dare I say it, the major third. Um, so B flat played as a major third. Then I go to a fifth from a D, so D power chord. Then I go to another major third. This G sharp, which is kind of like a major third from that E, to give yeah. it a, because I'm playing that here and I'm going to resolve out of it, we can get away from it. It's just kind of a moment of tension. So then I go chromatic, which yeah. kind of ultimately pull back to yeah. our E. So all together. Yeah, and I'm up an octave on that, so I'm. I'm literally just playing yeah. the root notes there. Kind of articulates it more, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, a little bit. Should we do that together? Sure. Ready? So one, two, three, and. Yeah. Yeah, tight. So those triplets really make the difference at and, the end. And the upper, upper end is something which you can, you don't have to always be down there. Yeah. You know, you can kind of move move around and we talk about orchestration a lot, don't we? Sure. That kind of thing, really. Yeah, and it's also giving you options that if you suddenly go to both guitars going low, then all that weight suddenly lands in the new section. Yeah. And that takes you by surprise. Um, so by, by using that range and the, the fretboard a bit more, you can really change the impact that your listener has in the section that you're listening to and then have a direct impact on what comes next. Mm -hmm. So it's really worth exploring. Totally. Then we go into the A part, don't we? Oh, well, yeah. I actually, um, tell us what you're doing there. It kind of feels like a verse part to me. I kind yeah. of think of that main riff as like a verse chorusy kind of theme. And then yeah. this next bit feels like the, the verse. So it stays very 16th notey because we want to keep that energy up because this is thrash, yeah. right? It's like no kind of chill out moments. No. Um, so we stay in A, so I guess that fifth fret, but this time I really want to pull out that, that Phrygian thing again. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to open my. A power chord, 16th note, palm in, in between. Then I go back to that major third again, the B flat, then switch it up to a B flat power chord to get a little melody. Then I go back to that B flat major third again. This time I go up to the 10th fret and play fourths, just to change it up a little bit because I don't want to overuse the power chord. Nope. I want to get some variety in there. So I've got my phrase so far. Then I just stay with fifths at the end. And then we get a little turnaround thing. This section's a diminished section, and what it involves is moving power chords around in groups of three, but three semitones apart. Mm -hmm. so and what that's what, like, yeah. mark that out. Yeah, it's kind of... Yeah, I've heard that sound, yeah. Yeah. It's very common, but very cool. And what you've done is... take it further you if you going, wanted right? yeah. yeah so that's basically the idea um, and that that very common sort of diminished arpeggio sort of pattern mm. in a chordal into a, turn, into a chordal, chordal presentation yeah, yeah chord sequence and uh, well, something else that's really interesting about that bit as well with metal stuff we can focus a lot on the downbeat because that's where yeah. the weight is right but for this particular phrase again it's a turnaround so I want it to feel like there's some unrest yeah. for a moment because we're going to resolve into the new section so harmonically it feels unrested with that yeah. diminished nuance it doesn't feel very kind of um, secure at that moment in time so to add to that rhythmically we're placing those chords on the offbeat so you could kind of get an open palm muted sixth string uh, in between So it's very kind of, if you've kind of played it with a different yeah. set of chords, it'd sound like reggae. Yeah. But um, 
we're using it as that turnaround, so it feels bang, unsettled. Bang, 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 very bang, cool. Bang, and then, boom, we're going to use that downbeat that we always want to get to yeah. as the resolve into the new section. So it's, it's a really interesting thing to explore, but particularly the end of a phrase where you want people to then land heavy yeah, into the yeah, new yeah. riff. So we'll try that riff together, because I'm actually playing that A riff slightly differently. I'm playing it on mm. the A string, whereas you're playing it off on the lower string. Of, of the E string, exactly. And it's even though pitch-wise we're in the same area, it's different textures, isn't it? Different tone, yeah. yeah it's so very, it's very slightly. I'm kind of picking right back at the bridge with it, really. So. Yeah. Getting a slightly different sound. So. Relative sound, yeah. Yeah, cool. cool. Okay. Let's do that. One, two, three, four. You can feel that it wants yeah, to resolve yeah. into that new Big section time. now. So what is the new section? Where are we going? Well, we've done a lot with kind of riffing and dyads, two notes being played at the same time. So here I felt like it needed to get a different atmosphere, a different nuance. So I decided to go with single notes for this riff. And it felt like it wanted to go to F sharp because it feels like, you know, we're moving somewhere still. So I went to the F sharp as the tonal center. And I wanted to again, even though it's single notes, I wanted to have that edge, that atmosphere, that angst. So I've gone for a scale. Ooh, dark. So got a flat two, a flat five, a flat seven. Lots of different flattened notes going on. Um, so we end up with F sharp Locrian. Yeah. Now, outside of metal music, people usually run screaming at the idea of writing something using Locrian because yeah. it's so intense, right? And for so a lot intense, of situations, yeah. it doesn't always really work so well. Because it's so intense, it's brilliant for metal and thrash yeah. music. So I've taken my F sharp, I'm going to play around that scale, but that flat two is important in this. So to get there, I didn't want to just move between the two. So it's a mixture of ringing notes and palm muted again. I'm bending into it yeah. for, for edge and atmosphere yeah. and some character to the phrase. And then I play some single notes to reference that Locrian sound. And, I'm, and to get shape in that, I'm blending ringing notes with palm muted notes. So you get that shape of kind of breathes and it's got yeah, dynamic yeah. range into it. Um, which, again, as a listener, it pulls you right in because it isn't just monotone, one dynamic, one attack. Yeah. It's got real shape and um, sort of a dialect to it. Yeah, exactly. And it's dark, and, and that's what the feel is. What's interesting, though, is you're moving around between E. A and F sharp, and actually, when you're <laughs> moving between chords like that, mm. again the songwriting is coming out because you're you're not just sticking on one string, sure. soaring through a shed. Sure, you know it's this. <laughs> Your song's going somewhere. Mm, That's really important. And also, because we're moving away from E, when we finally go back there later in the song, it's going to have so much impact because that's yeah. ultimately what we want to get back to. So we have to go it's away drop, from it yeah. to come back. So we've got that riff here in that F sharp locker in. Now, I wanted to repeat it lots of times because it's a good theme, yeah. but I didn't want to play it exact every time. So subtle variations in that. The second time around, we play it. But the last two notes yeah. are an octave higher, just to kind of pull, grab your ears uh, for a moment. There's something slightly different going on, which means the third time I can play it the same way again because I've departed with that little variety. So the third phrase is the same as the first. Then I need a closing set of chords to finish that sequence for my fourth cycle. So then we hit the E, and I go to a G major third interval there. Which you could repeat around mm -hmm. the riff again, or you could move on, which is yeah. what we've done. Yeah, yeah. So it's a really cool chord, it's yeah. dark. And it is a major third. I mean, it's yeah. top of, or the bottom of a G chord, the bass. Yeah. Nothing yeah. to be afraid of, though. Yeah. It's Definitely cool. explore major thirds and moving them around yeah. that interval shape there, because, like I said, who would have thought a G major yeah. would give it that much variety? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. again, in the context, it's all about context, yeah, very good. it sounds great.
So that led us to the solo section. Yeah, so it did, yeah, which is over here now. <laughs> It's, yeah. it's very like the first Metallica or the the latest Metallica album. Yeah, sure. even. There's there's elements again. of that, yeah, yeah, that classic sort of a riff, um, and and it's it's really nice to play actually because it's it's kind of more hard rock. Yeah. But when you've got that tone and yeah. that attitude and that approach, yeah, it's I, thrash. I kind of feel the way that we're playing it really digging in. So all downstrokes. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. You're having away at those chords and putting some mood on that seventh yeah, fret. Yeah. Kind of makes me feel like bands like Megadeth, that kind of totally, yeah, metal, but it's kind of got like a bit of energy around what's going on, a slightly upbeat kind of feel to yeah. it. Because we're going to take it lower in a minute anyway, so um, so that's going on. It, it, interval again, it's fourth, isn't it? Yeah, and that's I think right. it's, again the the riff of all riffs where it uses those strings and that shape. Yeah. Right, it sounds that. Right, it works for that riff, yeah, which yeah. is the, the riff that we all think of, then it's going to work, right? So, again, we can use those higher strings for metal. We can put a root under it to get yeah, that yeah, weight. Yeah. Totally. Get some real shape going on. Exactly. So that's fun to solo over. So what did you do with the solo? Just give us an overview of what you decided yeah. to play. Well, I wanted to reference things that you hear from different players. So I went for a bluesy feel first, because it's A, I went for A minor pentatonic, or A blues scale. Hit that fifth fret, so that scale shape. Uh, classic blues, yeah, 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 works, works. But I want to get that edge in there, so I brought in that, that E flat note. Yeah. Um, put some wire with that. You get lots of expression mm -hmm. and weight to it. Um, so that's really great. So again, you can kind of hear Kirk Hammett's and those yeah, types of players totally. and that. And then I wanted to think about other players in metal. So you'll, you'll often hear players like Mike Friedman talking about sweet picking. It, there's so many players that have done it brilliantly in yeah. the 80s yeah. that if you just sweep up and down an arpeggio, the kind of yeah. that stuff, again, it's great, it's got energy, but it's hard to get your own personality into that because, yeah, it's and it's hard to, outdo what's already been done because mm -hmm. it's been done so brilliantly already. So you've got to look at other ways of doing it. So I kind of thought about moving through arpeggios and kind of thinking about the stuff that Friedman's talked about of using arpeggios as a vehicle to move around the neck, yeah. but not just, just up and down. Um, and then other players that do that really well and, and borrow from other places, a player like Alex Skolnick, mm -hmm. where obviously spent years doing the thrash thing, then got heavily into the jazz, yeah. moved away from Testament and just focused on his jazz for a long time, uh, and then came back to Testament yeah, and now right. blends those two worlds. Really so brilliantly. Again, what really I'm doing here, I'm thinking about A minor, but blending it with other notes and a bit of pentatonic shapes within that. So I'm kind of moving across it. So you can hear that sound, but there's other things going on. And then I'm moving to legato stuff, so using 8, 10, and 12 on the high E string. Typical pattern. Do I get chromatic? Yeah, yeah. So I use that little nice. pattern. Well, I'm just filling in blanks. Yeah. It's really sitting a, around the arpeggio and. Like an E minor. E minor 7 kind of thing. Um, but with those notes going on in the middle, yeah, so yeah. it fills the blanks, it gives it that jazzy nuance without going, you know blowing your mind, trying to learn yeah, all the yeah, theory yeah. around it. But uh, yeah, filling that in, I've got a nice little pattern. Then I got back into the more traditional sweeping approach. So up in A minor, because I'm playing over that, up to another position so of cool. A minor. Up. And I've just got add a few notes left at the end, yeah. so I stay with the A minor thing again. But I'm moving through it, I'm not just going up and down one shape, I'm kind of grabbing a bit of an arpeggio, moving yeah. to the next one, grabbing a few mo notes and moving on. So I'm at the end, and I wanted that da -ga -da -ga -da -ga -da -ga -da kind of rhythmic finish yeah. to, the, to the solo. So I've got a nice little four note phrase there. I had one, four more notes left, so I thought I don't really want to change at this point, so I just moved it up one fret. So it's yeah. unresolved, okay. it's tension. And I'm going to get to my Very A cool. root to resolve. Very so. Cool. It's using arpeggios, but because we can get so used to just falling into kind of these patterns that we learn to learn the yeah, shape. Totally. That's good for learning stuff, but it doesn't always make for the most compelling music. C so. shape, A minor arpeggio. Yeah. It's fine, but 
in the right what context. Yeah. Right? What else can you do with it? So too? yeah, just fill in the blanks with the jazzy notes, taking little fragments and then moving on um, is a great way of spicing that up. Yeah. So where did you go with yours? Well, I mean, I kind of went. Oh, I just went the the, the went for it. I mean, <laughs> I went for it. Yeah, we sat in here and kind of worked on it. I had a rough idea planned out in my head, mm -hmm. but I kind of it, it, it's improvised really. And there's certain go-to's with we when you're playing this kind of music. Um, and obviously the blues scale is 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 fine, which is what you did. But I, I guess I went the more Metallica route really with yeah, it. Yeah. And uh, but but what I wanted to do is introduce some more rhythmical stuff. And and I mean I did my, but also I used this shape of of uh, it's a it's a G scale, but it's actually played from the A obviously because we're in mm -hmm. that key. So it gives like us a Dorian, Dorian sound. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And that, if you get that right, especially with this kind of guitar tone, yeah. sounds really tick, 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 which almost is picked. Yeah, yeah, almost picked, almost picked, but it's legato. So. Cool. That's and the you idea. And certain notes within that. Uh, I'm trying to keep the rhythm. Yeah, nice. So that's the one, two, three, four. Nice. Yeah, I'm trying to keep that in time because that yeah. is the theme, sure. it's the vibe, it's the attitude. I think something you've done really well though as well is that, which a lot of players can, can overlook, is that you've thought about when you finish yeah. and what that note is. Yeah. Because it sounds like it makes sense when you finish on that note at that point. Yeah. Because you can get into a totally. sequence in a run and then lots of players start really strong and then play away and then they don't really know where they're going with it. And yeah. then the end of the phrase kind of meanders and loses impact. But if you go, right, start in here, Here's my well, it, that's the sort of and thing that you finish. you learn from building a vocabulary, yeah. and then you've got your kind of go-to things. Because I like to say this is improvised. It's improvised to some extent, but improvisation is from a vocabulary, isn't it? Really? Yeah, it's things that so you know you can pull thing, out. As things phrases, that you can yeah. rely on. So I did that. I mean, but well, I actually finish on the B note because on the first beat of the next bar, I wanted to kind of move up. Um, onto uh, onto the G scale and just kind of run up it really with that sure. machine gun pick attack. Yeah, um, and that's that's the idea. And they are go to things. They sure. they they're pretty standard, but they're pretty effective. I think. I think if you if you're gonna have a, a strong conclusion to a phrase, it's yeah. got to be something you land with absolute confidence. Totally. And what's nice about what you've done there is you've gone for that legato approach, which although you had the kind of rhythmic intensity there, yeah, has got that smoother edge to it, mm -hmm. which then contrasts that big machine gun picking finish, exactly. which yeah, just yeah. gives it that viciousness right at the end. Bit of one and bit of the other. Yeah, and that yeah. closing statement has got all that attack. Yeah, and it's fun to play. Cool. And again, you finished on the right note at the right yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, that's right, just on the top, yeah. And slid out, you know, a bit of yeah. delay on the top if you want. It's very cool. And then we finished with that chromatic idea, but we just extended it a bit longer to make yeah. more of a statement with it. So the, remember the, the previous phrase ending was... Just use the right pick up. <laughs> um, which is good, but it's kind of a just a short transition phrase earlier on in the song, but this is the end of the song. Yeah. So to extend that, what I've done is kept that part, then moved up the neck to the fifth fret, and repeated that. Yeah. So um, five, five, four, three, shift my hand to repeat that three again. Three, two, one, because ultimately again, yeah, there's a full That's where stop. you want to be. Yeah. So what did you play against that? I basically mirrored it up the octave because I like the idea of the of the high um, yeah. harmony. It's not harmony; it's a unison, but against the against the lowness of oh, the rhythm guitar. So that's what I did. Sure. So should we play it together? One, so. two, three, four. Nice and tight. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But it's great, it's great because it's it's putting parts together which are varied um, because it's very easy with this kind of music to just play the same thing. And sure. when you when you record it, you probably will track a rhythm track left and right. Yep. And then you might add things on top. Hmm. Um, and it's good to have that weight left and right. Sure. Um, but also as well, it's nice to have the variation in there and sure. add in parts which are different. Yeah, and I think also if you think about how this works, studio or live, if you've got two guitar players 
reinforcing a riff, but they've got slightly different registers mm -hmm. that they're playing in. An audience are going to be able to decipher what's going on and what, yeah. you know, there's differences going on. So you're going to hear that it's a more interesting section of the song than just one, yeah. one thing happening from both sides of the stage. Yeah. So you almost get like a stereo field present itself mm -hmm. to the listener, um, which is a much more organic natural exactly. experience. I would also add as well, to summarise, I'd say, think about your posture when you're playing this kind of mm. music. Because if you're hanging over the guitar like that, and you're doing this kind of very, you know, erratic kind yeah. of um, movement for, for long periods of time, you know, you, you, you can end yeah. up with, with, with issues in your arm and your back. Sure. And it, it's, it's not easy to do. No. Um, and it's very easy to, to injure yourself. Yeah. It's the posture and then thinking about how much pick to use at yeah. different points because uh, those fast sixteenths, particularly those verses, if you've got too much pick, yeah. you're going to trip over the strings and slow yourself down. So totally. it's about pick angle to get that abrasive, where you mute, and having enough attack that it sounds aggressive but you're yeah. not creating barriers for yourself to hit those different speeds. So, exactly. And you'll find that it's to do with the gauge of strings that you use, the shape of pick that you use, how you hold And also pick. where you pick, because the thing yeah. is you can, if you use this big fleshy part of your hand here, <laughs> all of a sudden you're, you're, you're sounding like anthrax. Yeah. But if you're using this bony part of your hand there and right at the bridge, <laughs> Megadeth territory sure. really so you, there's, a, there's that variation to be played with yeah explore that because yeah. you, you can't just have a one palm mute fits all for no. this kind of stuff particularly if you need speed and rhythmic yeah. precision so explore but explore and record because yes. you can listen back that's really important but yeah. enjoy yourself have fun posture thinking ideas yeah thrash away yeah see you next time